this is Aaron Dominion uh, with Creation Kit Scripting Series Papyrus Tutorials. In this episode, we're going over the first part of variables, the basics of variables. So, what will be covered? What a variable is, how do you assign a variable, the types of variables, and variable naming conventions, which those are very important. I thought it would be good to start off early with good uh, naming style. So let's go with what a variable is. A variable is anything that stores a value. Uh, so examples on the slide, x equals 3, uh, George equals my name is George. Um, anytime you see in a script where a value is equal to another, uh, to something, that usually tells you, oh hey, that's a variable. So. How do you assign a variable? Well, the equal symbol is used to give a value to a variable. Uh, so in the example x equals 3, you are giving the variable x the value of 3. And in a different example uh, that you used George equals my name is George, you're giving the variable George the text my name is George. So into the meat of it, the types of variables. So in Papyrus, you have a bool, which is a boolean, an int, which are integers, uh, values that is, a float, which is decimal values, string, which is text, objects, and arrays. So let's start off with bool. A bool contains one of two values, true or false. The default value of a bool is false. Um, this is useful for anything that's like on and off, it is this or it isn't this. Um, so, good example to just show you what a bool is. If light is on is equal to false, or is false, that's how you should read that anyway. We are checking to see if light is not on. Now, there's other ways to write that, but this is good for the purposes of showing you what a boolean is. Um, you can use this in other cases. Um, is the bear dead? Uh, being a boolean variable name. Uh, the value of false being, oh hey, it's alive. Uh, the value of truth being, oh, it's dead. Well, let's go to the next variable type, integers or int, as uh, Papyrus calls it. Uh, they contain uh, non-decimal values. Uh, important to note, they can either be positive or negative, and they can only hold values that are 32 digits long, with each number being a digit. Okay, so in the example that I have here, lights on count being uh, how many lights are on currently uh, in my head. I have that to 9, so there's 9 lights on, is what we're saying there in this example. It has the value of 9, though. Uh, another int example, music play equals 0, basically, oh hey, there's no music playing, or there's 0 songs and play currently, depending on how you use it. Um, for a side note, because you can use uh, integers like booleans if you are familiar with C programming where you don't have booleans. Uh, for example, you create a variable called lights on, like I used in the boolean example. Uh, the value of 0 means it's off, the value of 1 is means it's on, and you can use integers a lot of times for conditional statements. They're very useful in that regard if you want to have different states of whatever your script's doing. Okay, let's get to float. They contain decimals. Uh, they can be given integer values. They'll just be converted uh, to have like a point zero at the end. Um, they can also, I didn't list here in the slide, they also have the same rules, integer values. In addition, uh, they can only hold values 32 digits long. Why is that important? Well, if you have a number and then you have the decimal, well, 
it doesn't matter what side of the decimal point you are on, you're only given 32 numbers, or 32 digits that you can do there <laughs> for your, like if you have a large value for the decimal but a small number, well, you can't increase the number at all without losing a bit of that decimal. Uh, so the examples I gave here, player health equals 100.0 with the 100.0 being our float in this case. Um, then another example, hours passed equals 1.5, uh, one and a half hours if you're trying to use it in logic. Um, floats are really inefficient most of the time. You only want to use them if you have a function that requires a float or if the precision of your value matters. Okay, string. There's a lot of... it stores text, but you have special rules involved with strings. So, whenever you are typing in your string, slash n, that means you want to create a new line, or backslash n, my bad. Uh, when you want to put a tab in your text, you do backslash t, when you just want to have a normal backslash, you do backslash backslash. Um, and then if you want to have double quotes inside your string without terminating the string, you do backslash quote. So to give an example of uh, what I said, because I know there's a lot of special rules here and it might be confusing at first, uh, I put it in the format that you would enter the string here. So double quote denotes, oh hey, you're starting a string. George said, comma, and then to do the quotes in the text, backslash quote, I am dumb, period, backslash quote, to end what George said, and then a quote to end your string. And then if you, I put the translation here, George said, I am dumb, and it has, uh, it in quotes. Sorry we're not using uh, papyrus in this example just because we're going over basics before we actually get into manipulating variables and testing that out in game. Alright, so here's a few other examples just to help out. George backslash backslash Polly decides to pick up the wrench period uh, backslash n, I laughed. That translates to, for the first line of your string, George slash Polly picked up the wrench. Uh, with the slash being a backslash. I'm sure that's not, I am positive that's not the right way to use it, but it's a good example just to show you what that does. And then on the next line it will say, I laughed. Alright, in our second example here on this page, uh, it starts off with the tab symbol. George wants to start a book club, and it translates to your string being tabbed, and then it has the string George wants to start a book club after the tab. Oh, and that's that's pretty much it for strings. You use this to store uh, messages and just anything that's text related. Um, objects and arrays. Um, so anything that's not one of those four primary types that we just went over is considered an object. And then arrays just denote collection of like variables. Like you can have an integer array, a float array, a string array, a boolean array, and then there's lots of different types of objects. So I so it would be silly to just say an object array. Um, it might be more accurate to say an object reference array or an actor array and so forth. Don't worry too much about those currently. They will be covered in later lessons when we learn some more of the uh, skills. So the big uh, important topic for this, since variables you will be using all the time, is variable naming conventions. It's the 
best to start on good habits rather than getting into bad habits uh, when learning. So general rules. Do not use single letter variables. Single letter variables tell you nothing about what the variable does. Um, the only exception to that may be is when you're um, doing a like a loop or a while loop or something like that which we'll cover later. Um, don't use nonsense names that don't have anything to do with the variable like uh, my tummy hurts to be like the count for how many lights are on. That would be just silly. And then stick with the style. I know we haven't covered styles yet but uh, don't switch back and forth between naming styles at least for whatever script you're working on. It just makes it harder to read. So let's go over a few naming styles. The first one, camel case. So uh, your first word for the variable starts off lowercase and then uh, each additional word is started with a capital. So let's go over a few examples just to show you a camel case at the very top. That shows you a good example in the title of this slide. Uh, next example that I have on here is count because it's a single uh, word variable. And then another example, player health. Notice how health is capitalized. Okay, now here's a modified approach to camel case where you put the variable type in the name. So uh, the variable type will be your lowercase uh, word in this case and each word after that to denote your actual variable name will be uh, starting off as capital so variable camel case and title that's a good example another example int count because int is the integer variable type and count is the variable name then another example float player health with float being the variable type and player health being the actual name. Um, a pro with this method is that you know the type of the variable when you are reading the code. Um, the downside is you, it can promote bad habits of reusing the variable name uh, for different types of variables such as and I used a few objects in this case object reference door and door door because they're two different variable types but uh, they have the same variable name that would be very confusing to read and it might confuse you when you're making your script at the time okay so let's go with the third style all words start caps each word starts as a cap regardless of position uh, example uh, look in the title all words start caps. Uh, the next example, count. And then another example, player health. Notice how uh, they're all capital. It's a pretty good style. Uh, might be a little harder to read, I don't know. It's a preference thing for style 3 compared to style 1. Um, and then style 4, it's uh, you put the variable type in front of uh, your variable name again. Uh, just this time it's all words start caps instead of uh, camel case. So let's just go into the examples for this. Int count, notice how it's all capital even for the variable type. And then float, play, float player health. <laughs> um, again the same types of pros and cons. Uh, I forgot to change uh, the case, uh, change it out of camel case for the cons down there but Hopefully you get the idea. Um, here's another style that I've used a few times, but it doesn't gain you anything necessarily. Uh, in this style, you start off with whatever mod acronym before going with uh, an all word starts with the caps style. So uh, AJD being uh, the mod author in my case, SCH. I'm going with uh, an internal name I use for the Soul Cairn House mod that I have, just for the sakes of an example here. And then the variable count, 
and then going with the same acronym for player health. <laughs> um, the pros of this style is, oh hey, this variable is associated with your particular mod. Uh, the downside of this is if you're going to be reusing this script for a different mod, uh, you have to rewrite the script for the new mod. It won't take a lot of effort, but if you want to have fewer things running in the script uh, cache or stack, it's probably more accurate. Um, this will hurt your style in that regard if you want to have uh, minimal scripts running from your mod. Uh, final note on the naming convention, stick with one of those styles. Um, uh, if you are edit and these next two points are very important. If you are editing someone else's script, keep naming conventions the same as their script so they can read what you add to it, uh, vice versa. And then if you're editing Bethesda scripts, try to keep with uh, their naming convention for the particular script. Um, the only thing I would note there on that, maybe having your mod author acronym in there would be helpful just to say, oh hey, here's the parts I edited, but again, that's a style thing. <laughs> just keep with a naming convention there. You should be good. Alright, if you have any questions about the information here, I know we didn't go into actual uh, papyrus this episode. But if you have any questions, feel free to message me. I'll have these links in the uh, video description, as well as some other links so you can look up more information, more examples about uh, some of the things we covered here. And I will see you on the next episode.